Hey guys, Joe Pye here. Welcome back to the shop. You know when you're running an Engelate, the most efficient chip that you can produce is called the C or a 6. Now, the C or 6 zone, so to speak, may be outside your comfort zone because you've got to push your machine pretty hard. Keep that tool buried and keep that cross section of your chip really thick so as it flows off of your tool, it breaks instead of gets real stringy and comes out at you like a weed whacker. Anyway, one of the things that I cling to as far as a lathe chip is concerned, if it's long, it's wrong. Simple, right? With lathe chips anyway. Now, the C and 6 chip is just that. It's a chip that looks like this. Or a chip that looks like this. And you can see why they call it a C or a 6. Now that comes from the material thick enough that it doesn't like to bend in a complete circle. It'll go so far and then it'll crack off, which is what it's doing. It's breaking, which is why the thing that's breaking it is called a chip breaker. So this is really hard to do. It's really hard to form a chip like this if you're just using a smooth tip tool. But if you have a Dremel tool, if you have a die grinder, if you have little hand stones, you can actually grind your own chip breakers into the top of a high speed tool and be very successful with the chip that it forms. So I'm going to show you a commercial TPG holder that has a built-in chip breaker insert uh, topper on it. And I'm going to show you a high-speed tool that I ground and we're going to turn the lathe on and we're going to make them both pop out season sixes right before your very eyes. So let's take a walk out to the lathe show you how it's done. Alright guys, in our quest for the perfect lathe chip we're going to use two kinds of tools. This is a hand ground high speed steel tool bit and I hit this on the edge of a grinding wheel and then took a Dremel tool to it this way so that the serrations or the scratches in the high speed are running with the flow of the chip. If they're running across the flow then they're going to start to jam up as some of the upper edges on this particular tool are. Now if you want to grind your channel in there first and you're worried about your feather edge, go ahead and grind your channel in there first and then as you grind back on the face of your tool, the arc that's formed by the, your trough that you ground in there is going to start to deteriorate. Naturally the closer you get to the bottom of the arc, the less the rake angle is going to be. So grind it back to the point where you still have a little bit of upturn on the face of your tool and it's okay if the back is higher. That's actually preferred. So this is the high speed steel tool that we're going to stick in there first. I have 3 inch diameter aluminum in the machine and I'm going to run it at about 1000 RPM and probably feed this really slow initially to show you that you can get a ribbon and then I'm going to try to snap it off and we're going to see if we can make some C's and 6's. Hopefully it doesn't snap off because I like that tool. Now this is a commercial TPG Kenna metal tool. Okay, so all you guys are going to say, hey, what's the number on that tool? I'm going to leave it right there for about the next 12 minutes. Actually, about 3 seconds. And show you that on this tool as well, it's got the same type of thing going on. This actual little plate on top is a chip breaker plate that looks like it's just holding down the insert, but it serves two purposes. As the chips flow across the top of this insert, they hit this inclined surface right here and start to form a circle, and they just can't go all the way around, and that's when they snap. So we're going to compare the chip geometry between the high speed steel with the hand ground relief and the Kenna Metal TPG tool holder with the carbide chip breaker. So let's uh, set these tools up, get the machine turned on, and make some chips. First cut is going to be a 5 thousandths speed rate, which means the carriage is going to advance 5 thousandths of an inch for every revolution of the material. It's a 3 inch material, 1000 RPM, 6061. Let's go 150 deep per side. WD-40 has a lubricant, 150 deep, 5,000 feet rate. Let's see what 
Chip is long, the feed is wrong. That is too slow. I'm going to push this by hand just to get that chip to break, just to prove that it will break, and then I'll match the feed rate with the power and I'll just step back. So what you're, the next cut you're about to see is the same depth, same RPM, same material, same tool. I'm going to feed it by hand and try to get that chip to break. Let's see what happens. Seven thou power feed. Getting there, but not quite. Let's jump to ten. Ten thou. Sticking together, got to go heavier. I'm going to go 100 thou deep from where we are right now. It cut very well just a moment ago. See if we can duplicate it and take a look at the chips afterwards. Hundred thousand deep. First side, 020 feed rate, main ground. Here we go. Is the ideal chip. I had a guy working for me make those kind of chips. I'd give him a raise right on the spot. Let's scoop them up and take a look at the geometry. These are the chips that the high speed tool just produced. This long one's got to be a leftover. It's a little bit thin. But you can see the closure on some of these. This one right here, that's coming around a whole lot farther than that one there. It's a comfortable mix. If that tool were to dry out for even just a little bit, I would bet that it's probably going to snap right off. But this is a 20 thou feed rate. You'd have a real hard time bending this chip, real hard time, before it punctured your finger. But that is why it breaks. And that is a beautiful thing. If you can fill your chip in with this type of chip as opposed to the rat nest that usually comes off on a high speed steel tool, then you're doing good. So there you go. It does work. A little patience. A little trial and error. And as soon as you know what your feeds and speeds and your depth of cut and your feed rate is, write it down somewhere and just don't waste any more time. Back this off to 100 thou deep. Ten thou feed rate, 1,000 RPM. That is ideal. 
get a cup under that. Show you what that looks like. With any kind of luck, these chips will not burn through the cup here, but it was something good to look at. That's hot, think again, because they are actually starting to melt through this cup. Let's pour them out, take a look. Okay, just like I drew on the board, the boss walks by your machine and sees these kind of chips laying in your bin. He is going to be extremely happy. I'd be happy if I could get a camera that focused. Let's just leave it there. You can see the mix. We do have some that are halfway open. The little C's. The majority of them are the sixes. But it is a comfortable combination of both of the geometries coming off of that feed rate. That was a hundred thou deep. 10 thou per rev, 1,000 RPM, 6061 aluminum. And this is a whole lot safer than having that bird's nest wrap around your machine. And the finish isn't bad either. It's still very warm to the touch. But we could make this entire end of this piece go away in just a matter of maybe two minutes it's gone. Of course, some people are going to say saw it off, and you're absolutely right, but if you had a small diameter, you could make it uh, happen pretty quick. Anyway, season six are what you're looking for. If it's too long, back off on the depth a little bit like I did. That worked out very well. And if it still won't break, push it a little bit harder. Don't be afraid of it. These are machines, and they're a little tougher than we are. Be safe. Watch your fingers. And uh, one jumps on you, make sure you get it off quick because it will burn. Be careful. See ya. Well, I think you can see the efficiency behind breaking a chip versus having the chip come off 99 feet long. And I know it's cool to make a nice, big, symmetrical chip. We used to do it all the time where I used to work. We would actually line the Christmas tree with whoever had the longest aluminum chip, brass chip, plastic chips. We used it as garland, which is really not a good idea because if the machine ever claims it back in and pulls 60 feet of chips across the floor, get out of the way. So. If you can break the chips, it's a lot safer. The only downside is they are very hot because it's an aggressive cut, and naturally aggressive cuts make heat, right? So if one jumps on you, make sure you brush it off real quick. Uh, hand grinding the chip breaker, better the finish, the easier it's going to flow out. If you have to do the channel in the top of the high speed bit first, and then grind the feather edge to it for the cutting edge to position the chip breaker where you want it, not a bad way to go either. Anyway, give it a shot, push the machine. If the chip is long, something's wrong, push it until that chip breaks, or the don't push it until the tool breaks. That's not always a good thing. Anyway, push it until the chip breaks, you're gonna be proud of yourself. And as the diameter reduces, increase the RPM, keep it going, keep the tool uh, moist, wet, coolant, WD-40, whatever you gotta spray on there. Breaking chips is a lot easier if there's coolant involved. Anyway, that's all I got. Be careful, watch them, they get hot, they jump on you. Get out of the way. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas.